everybody, welcome back to Crazy Dave's Crew. I'm Laura and I'm so glad you joined us today. I want to take us back to the basics a little bit and talk about pinning and stitching. Uh, I've already sewn one and this is what works for me. Don't know if it'll work for you, but it, it's fairly consistent. Um, remind everybody, I am not a professional. I am not an expert. I am a beginner who I took one class at a local sewing machine shop um, I think yeah junior high school I think I took a home mat class and we made a pillow uh, that was uh, <clears throat> so many years ago <laughs> and, but uh, through trial and error I have come up with a method for pinning like with my nine patches or, you know, trying to get my seams together, and I want to show you what works for me. So don't go away, we'll be right back. Okay, so what I've got, I've got some yellow, uh, yellow sunflowers and a plain green, and I'm making some nine patches. All right, so I've already got part of this done. I want to lay this down and try to nest the seams. Really trying to just nest them in, nestle them, butt them, jut them. Um, trying to think of all the synonyms that I can. I'm going to get this just like that. Okay? Now, it's nice and flat. If you didn't have it, the seams butted up, jutted up, nested properly, you'd feel a bump. But this is a nice flat. And of course, I pressed to the dark side. I'm going to, again, I'm, I'm holding this down. I want to pin to the left of my seam, and I'm going to try to get some of my seam allowance in there. And then I'm going to pin to the right of my seam. Okay. Now, because I also like to make sure I, 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 I overdo it, I'll admit it. I'm going to, I don't, I don't want things to slip and I want to have a nice square. I want to have a nice shape. I'm also going to pin it over here at the side. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing for this other side. So I've got my seam going this way, the top one going this way, and I am going to nestle that in real nice. That gives me a nice corner. You can see that right there. Nice and flat. Holding it nice and tight together. I'm just going to pin that on the left. I'm going to pin that on the right. And again, I'm going to get this up, measuring it, getting it on the side. Because again, I just, I don't want everything to slip. And I'm not worried about it being perfectly even because I am going to square things up. Now, I have a very special way of sewing this together um, without sewing over my pins. So let's go to the machine and let me show you what I do. Again, this may not work for you, but it does work for me and that's why I want to share it with you. Um, if you don't have to pin, you're a rock star and uh, I wish I was you, but I have to pin. So let's go to the machine. All right, so I've got my machine set to the center. And part of that is because I'm using my piecing foot. I do like my quarter inch piecing foot. Okay. And it doesn't have room on the left or the right for the needle. I have learned the hard way <clears throat> multiple times. Um, if it's to the left or to the right, it's going to come down and hit this. Uh, you're going to get the emergency. 
signal on your machine, it's not going to work, um, you're going to break your needle, you know, any variety of things. So, we're going to just pop our... Now, if you don't have a piecing foot, just make sure whatever seam you use, whatever stitch position, whatever needle position you use, you use that throughout your project. Okay? Bottom line, um, that's the most important thing if you're wanting things to be consistent throughout your project, is maintain the same seam allowance, the same stitch length, you know, everything. Whatever you do the first time, do throughout. All right, and we are going to try, because I really want y'all to see what I do. So I've got my pin. There's my guide. And I'm just going to put that down right about there. Now I don't want my needle to go over my pin. So do you see the pin right there? I'm going to just scooch it over here to the left until it disappears from that guide, from the view of the guide. Now I can take it out. one wasn't quite as important. So let's go on to where we've got our seams together. All right, if I leave these here, my needle's going to run over them. And as long as it goes over, you're fine. But I know my luck. My luck would be I wouldn't, I wouldn't hit that dead on and break my needle, break my pen, and I would spend time having to readjust. So, um, again, I'm going to move my, my pen till it's no longer going to be visible in the guide. And I'm going to do that for both of them. Do you see? You're not going to go over those pins. And now I'm going to take the pins out. So it's not 100%, but it is consistent enough and close enough that I'm very pleased. Okay, moving it out of the way. Don't want to see it through my guide. I got a pin. Take the pins out. And then we're going to take that out. Let's take a look. All right. <clears throat> so let's take a good look. It's not always exactly perfect. You can see it's just a little off there, and I'm okay with that. But overall, I think it did pretty good. And just remember, you will find your own way of doing things, and you will find your way of getting your little points correct. And like I said, this is not, you know, like the quilt police version. This is my version. And it's not always 100% accurate. But, uh, it gets real close, and since I'm not putting in to a competition, I'm very happy with it. Um... It's a nice way to get comfortable with your machine and with learning your way around the points and uh, getting your seams together. So I hope this has been helpful. Hope you have a fun time and I hope you'll come back to Crazy Dave's crew. Thanks so much. Bye.